Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's Baskar, uh, Baskar Manobran. Uh, welcome to the session. And today we're going to have uh, an overview about Veeam Backup and Replication. And this is a small intro about me. Um, I hold a nine plus years of experience. And I have started my career as a hardware and networking engineer, followed by desktop support, system administrator, service delivery consultant, IT infrastructure admin, technical training specialist, and the last role which I played is knowledge champion. I was working with VMware. I mean, VMware was my previous company where I served as a uh, knowledge champion uh, close to three years. I joined Atos in Feb. Um, I spent my valuable time in Atos for the past three months, and I thought to share my knowledge um, on Beam Backup and Replications. So I have, I have scheduled this session for you all. And I have trained uh, 7,000 plus professionals globally on virtualization and cloud technologies. And I do uh, you know, conduct uh, sessions for the college grads where I be a guest lecturer into the colleges and uh, deliver uh, sessions on the future technologies like uh, on cloud computing, artificial intelligence, machine learning as such. And my, my area of interest it stayed again in you know, the virtualization and cloud. And I hold uh, VMware uh, certifications like uh, VMware Certified Associate, VMware Certified Professional, and VMware Certified Advanced Professional. MCITP from Microsoft and ITL v3. Yeah, I request um, you know a few of you participants you can unmute yourself and you can you know answer to my questions uh, to make the session more interactive. Yeah, hope uh, my voice is clear to you all. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I do recorded this session. So end of the session, um, I'll be I'll be sharing this, you know, um, recording to you all. Uh, I respect your time and, and kindly, you know, make use of the available time to uh, um, understand this technology and so on. Yeah. So how many of you have came across a recent data loss? Question to you all. Have you ever lost your data recently? No, at least I have not lost yeah. any data. Okay. Okay. But yes, we, we do lose data regularly, either mm -hmm. at the client side or uh, personal data loss mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. like in, in we are using mobile so we, mm -hmm. we lose our whatsapp messages sometimes we restore backup we lose our mobile we purchase our new mobile then we have to recover our data uh -huh. we lose some uh, data like client has modified some data accidentally that was not supposed to be so we need to recover the previous state data so we need all those ba backups so data loss is evident in it's everywhere so whatever even if the environment is secure like you have hardware failure so we do have these occurrence at uh, clients environment so storage failure or some bad sector on some areas mm -hmm. corruption so that mm -hmm. is a kind of corruption may be like uh, due to hardware uh, issues malfunction or due to some operational uh, issues transactional issues in database end or storage end so mm -hmm. like uh, sometimes like we have multi-pathing issues couple of uh, years back we had that uh, some bug right so uh, we see uh, such type of issues that cause uh, data loss or un uh, result in unused data or mm -hmm. The data that is not evident, not uh, expected. So we need to reinstate the previous state data or the data that was supposed to be there. 
it is not there instead we have the data replaced or updated by unwanted data okay yeah thank you so much yes uh, you got the answer for my the next slide yeah. Yeah. i will need a backup so you can see two images and and on your left you can see there are two bridges and one bridge is broken and uh, there is only one bridge is operational on your right you can see an well established standardized infrastructure where you have access to multiple locations where you have a quick access and and, and also you can see uh, um, the traffic load balancing i mean if there's a huge traffic the, the traffic is being load balanced right so if you look at this image we can closely relate make it relate to our it operations the current standard i mean if you take any um, um, organizations where backup plays a major role and if you do not have a planned backup and the when you when you don't have a planned backup possibly you land in and and failure and you cannot recover it so soon so the image on your left you can see here and the people who are commuting um, you know the broken bridge and 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 they need a lot of time to recover it and 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 you can see a few cars or something some particles has been already been part of the broken so it is lost the cars are the life was here that we can relate it to uh, the data so once it is lost it's completely gone once you have a well planned a backup technology and once you have a well planned uh, um, site recovery technologies so any time you can restore your data and you can make sure your business is up and operational most of the time see the uh, type of data loss first one intentional uh, this could happen um, when when um, this could happen when when someone is intentionally is deleting your data uh, it it can be a person who's you know who doesn't want to um, uh, see your growth uh, or uh, you want to excel ahead of you and intentionally makes your data deleted it's become intentional and unintentional this everyone does so anything you see on your desktop and any data instead of let's take an, an example on a phone and phone we have like 100 images and we want to remove a few blurred images or the images which is not you know good so we we used to select multiple images in the, and and in such a way that we would have selected the images which already exist and we unintentionally delete those pics yeah this could happen and the failure as you were discussing that the failure it points out here is uh, three type of failures one is um, the com complete um, uh, infrastructure it's fail in in terms in the natural disaster or uh, a specific component inside a server it can be your your hard disk and the third one is the 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 failure which happens when the data is in transit or when the data is in the move okay so we can have all these failures when um, this case this you can experience on a production environment and 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 the only way to recover these data is through your backups or through your her well planned backup uh, technologies in are in terms of and storage mediums and the last um, the very frequent one and that to most specific we are hearing nowadays a lot that is about, about the crime so you would have heard about ransomware do anyone know what exactly happens in ransomware thread uh, it Uh, tries to force the users to mm -hmm. uh, pay in bitcoin mm -hmm. yes yeah any any form of uh, digital money yes so very recently you have seen the globally uh, ransomware had an huge impact on the production environment where uh, people were you know thinking like unix machines or you know the uh, linux distributions can't be attacked but all this machine still can be attacked with the ransomware okay this is more like in malware uh, which which uh, spreads through an adware and this can spread throughout your organizations through network 
and how exactly it is uh, you know um, it encrypts the data in, in terms it, it, it's just look it's just like a virus which looks into the folders and make it as an unreadable format like alphanumeric characters and they have their own algorithm written and the only way to unlock this specific folder or you want to log into the machine is you have to decrypt it if you want to decrypt it you must and should have a key that key cannot be provided unless and until you pay in you know a lump sum amount or in a digital or a digital payment like bitcoin and uh, this you're gonna see you know the severe effect in terms of um, you know uh, um, the production data and the, it is also a threat to your national security if, if something got attacked in terms of an um, uh, um, I mean Indian national websites so definitely it's a potential threat and and we sh must and should have some kind of a backup technology ready and we should have a medium uh, where we can encrypt our we sh must and should have a multiple backups so here I'm, I'm just pointing out to, to um, uh, a, 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 a three level of backup where you keep it one is at the local the second one at the remote side and the third one at the cloud so once you see that your any one of your data is being hacked and you, you can always you know make use of the other data um, instead of depending on uh, a specific uh, instead of depending on a single backup data and history has given us you know the um, um, famous attacks are the threat to the IT industry it started all from 1989 with cyborg and followed by Reviton and crypto all 2014 and then in 2017 we have a ransomware so it's, it's individual responsibility over users in IT you must and should have your data secured in phone we have multi-level authentication you multi-level security authentication one is like swipe and the other one is with a pin similarly you must and should have something being protected your data so how many of us are protecting our uh, the folders are protecting our content inside the drive. We always dependent on um, you know the the uh, um, OS login credentials, and that can be hacked anytime. And 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 at uh, we have the BitLocker, which which locks at the hard disk level. Yeah, but still, uh, once you are getting I mean inside the machine, you you are always prone to attacks, always prone to you know uh, being affected through a virus, through an adware a malware or a spyware yeah what exactly matters to any kind of an organization or an individual person there are two things one is a recovery point objective or PO and a recovery time objective recovery point yeah let's take your data is lost and the first question is Till when you have a backup example today is Friday I'm working in a production environment and uh, I have my uh, data since two years and every day I accumulated data and suddenly my machine is crashed right it's, it's all about for a management they need to have a deliverables delivered on time so how can I make sure my data is up to date so always I look into my backup so I could see I have a daily incremental backup so I would straight away say that yes I do have a backup till yesterday and I have my previous years or months data has been backed up with a different backup policies so I have a backup till yesterday and the things which I have worked since morning till now it's lost so a recovery point objective will give you the information about till when you have a backup and the second one is how soon you can bring back this failed data or how soon you can bring back uh, the system back on production example the things which you have worked as of now since morning to here so you have to regenerate or you have to rework so management will ask yes we have lost like uh, five to six hours of production hash so how long you need it to recover it so again I have to calculate on the basis of my RPO plus my RTO so when I have my uh, data is back so I'll make sure that the data whichever is missing I have to rework 
and regenerate and and put the deliverables moving question to all uh, does any one of you have an an uh, uh, recent recovery on from a major uh, data loss and if so then how did you recover it anyone anyone in the call sorry uh, i uh, at least in my previous organization i was in technical field and i was in backup support team i was mm -hmm. I, was man, I was managing the same thing the backups on daily basis for an organization in mm -hmm. the data center so you used to uh, take a backup at night after 12 o'clock till mid uh, mm -hmm. morning and on daily basis we are keeping the data uh, for security region on the security gate and someone someone else so mm -hmm. one day it's happened that's a one data or the main database data has lost but we mm -hmm. had a current data which were kept somewhere else and we took those uh, data from there immediately we could restore the data so that afterwards i was not i am not in a technical field so it was my experience uh, so i could uh, restore the data immediately because i had a backup mm -hmm. okay so is there anyone didn't lose yeah. any data because of the current data okay and the question is if already last you lost your data example you you in your customer environment there is a failure okay and then how did you recover it and how long it took for you to recover it For me, it took only one hour uh -huh. to recover the data because I had everything uh, on place. Mm -hmm. So it took only okay. one hour to recover the data. Okay, okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, it seems you have very much protected. You know, uh, your uh, you have a very much protected backup solutions in your environment. Yes, you have made it recoverable within a hour. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Thank you. Let's see, uh, you know, the recovery process. First is all about detection. So we all would have been realized this, um, you know, when you lose something, after some time we realize, yeah, we have lost something. So uh, in, a, in, in an IT environment, we have monitoring software enabled, example, uh, Isinga, Nagios, any kind of ICMB enabled uh, monitoring software. Um, where it can trigger an alert to you. Let's take an example. I have a production server which is running in Taiwan and that server is monitored remotely by my monitoring team here in India and Taiwan has got a um, natural disaster. Let's take an earthquake and the data center is completely down. So my monitoring, monitoring server detected there is no ICMB. I mean, hardware is not received like more than a minute. So it triggered an alert. Hey, this machine is down. And me, I have to uh, log into the remote management applications. Example, uh, Dell Remote Access Controller. We call it as DRAC or HP ILO, Integrated Lights Out. Uh, so I'll try to connect to my remote management um, uh, applications so if i could able to connect then i could tell yes this is a problem related to an hardware if i could not able to connect any of the resources definitely something major thing would have happened okay recovery process two diagnosis or decision making yeah now we have to think what went wrong okay and why everything is went down what i would have done well what i would have planned better Let's take an example. Um, the data of more than a month has been lost and the backup has been kept it in a remote site. Maybe uh, the backup of Taiwan data center has kept it in um, Singapore. And we have got data for the last month and we have lost all data for this month. And now, uh, soon after the disaster, um, it took for it took uh, close to a week or two weeks and we, we rebuild our data center and now, now it's a time for us to restore from the backup. 
the only possible way is you use a van uh, through van you have to you know move your data back up from source to destination from singapore to back to taiwan and once it is moved and we will involve your application team and not an os team let's take you are from a backup team and you have given a responsibility to restore the data back to the production environment and now you as an backup engineer you have to decide which network you should use and which medium you should use whether you want to restore from a tape restore a backup from the tape or you want to restore from the disk or you want to restore from the cloud okay it's all you and you want you are the person who want to decide like how you want to restore back to the environment and make sure that uh, your ongoing production network is not impacted because you just restored from the disaster recovery and your uh, and your production network should not be disturbed and you would have observed in a production environment where you will have multiple lan segments or multiple uh, vlans the reason is you always need to segregate or separate your production traffic your management traffic and your backup traffic from each other okay you no need to have all this traffic being flown on a single network that makes your network congested and you are prone to data loss or you are prone to an um, irresponsive network yeah the last one uh, you'll once you have performed the uh, restore and it's it's all about your application team checking and and make sure that um, the test is successful and you can you know you can provide yes this is what i need and then this this machine is all in production and good to go so as you could see um if you don't have a proper backup plan right uh, in that example which is shared we don't have an uh, backup for this month you lost in between so you have to restore the entire month backup example um, you have backup till april and you do not have a backup for the month of may so you can uh, uh, you lost all your data and 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 you need all backups till april to be restored back to your environment and if you had the latest backup and you no need to rework on the data which you have lost for the month of may yeah yeah here is an uh, a tool uh, or i would say a simulator uh, rps.dwin.me so this is a tool where will give you a close by answers to you in terms of uh, restoring duration see in production um for a business perspective uh, let's say your client is very much keen on how much time you need i mean how much time you would need to restore back but no one can you know give you the right answers it's all depends on your backup medium example um, you're backing up from uh, singapore to taiwan uh, you need to have a connectivity you need to have a well optimized van connectivity and uh, when it is restoring the type of disk you uses whether you use a sata disk uh, sas sas disk or use a ssd disk right so it's 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 it's, it's become you know uh, um, complicated uh, to give an answer in terms of you know the restart uh, restore timings in that case you have a tool called rps.dwin it's a simulator where it will ask you for a parameters like source and destination and what kind of retention policy you have set and how much data you have and and, and what kind of data it is what kind of application what kind of file extension and where to where you are being restored so if you provide all this information it will give a rough information about uh, how long it take for you to you know completely restore so I don't think so. Anyone is using any kind of restore uh, simulators as of now. I think this is a time for you to you know have a look into this restore point simulator, which is available for free. You can look into this link rps.dwin.me. And backup methodologies like uh, type of backup you usually take like when a machine is off. and application when you want to take a specific application backup and the third one is you want to freeze and take a backup there are three different backup methodologies and the most commonly are um, uh, the 100% successful rate is mostly on the cloud back, cloud based backup sorry cold based backups because the all your storage iops will be nil on the specific virtual machine or a physical machine disk 
then you can take a backup. Okay, and this application consistent and crash consistent we use mostly on the uh, database machines and where you where your um, uh, database want to write something onto a specific uh, uh, database file and we, we have something called twice so it will hold and, and hold or pause and then it, it, it will take the, the block level changes in, in terms of deduplication I mean look for the deduplication if you have an existing backup or if you're taking it for the first time it's going to be full backup and then it will proceed what will you get backed up so what are things you'll back up so yes of course on the whole if you look out for an you know files and folders but look if you look at uh, there are other type of backups we have something called um, site to site uh, backup where you 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 take a backup at the storage levels you no need to point it to a single machine rather you point it to a specific storage medium and you will try to replicate from one data center to another data center the traditional one is uh, the OS level backup and full image level backup and in the modern days we use you know storage to storage in terms of storage snapshots we take uh, replication site to site replications and so on any doubts uh, anyone can stop me in between not an issue and we can get clarify your doubts if there is anything as such. Okay. There it comes, uh, the beam. Okay. So there are, um, I'll put it into this slide here. Yeah. There are a lot of um, backup softwares available in the market. Uh, Dell EMC, uh, EMC has got a uh, you know, product called Avamar. Avamar is a backup tool from uh, uh, EMC and Common Vault and Veritas Net Backup or Symantec Net Backup, IBM, Tivoli. So you have a lot of backup products available in the market. But still, why you want to know about Veeam? What's special in Veeam? So the, if, you, if you consider the pricing, so the, there are three factors which needs, uh, you know, uh, why I need to choose, why we need to choose a Veeam. Because Veeam is a global leader in terms of taking a backup for virtual machines. To be more specific, Veeam, it's designed to copy a file from one location to another location. If you look at over here uh, in 2007, can see here a released fast SCP. You would have heard about a tool called WinSCP, secure copy, Windows secure copy. So this WinSCP is used to copy a file from two different platforms. I mean it, you can extend the files between two different platforms. One is the Linux, other one is Windows. If you want to copy a file from Windows to Linux or Linux to Windows, you can use WinSCP. Right? So fast SCP also, so the, it, it's all the same purpose. I mean, it, if you want to copy a file, a virtual machine file, let's take an example, VMware. On VMware, you created a virtual machine and a virtual machine with the name example VM1 and all the files related to the virtual machine VM1 will be residing under a, a data store and inside the data store, there will be a folder called VM1 and inside that you will see a file extensions. .vmx, dot vswp dot nvram uh, vmware.log uh, dot vmdk flat dot vmdk delta dot vmdk vmtx vmsn vmsd vmss you will have multiple individual files these individual file i mean you want to copy only the disk file between um, singapore to taiwan Okay, so you can use fast STP and you can define your source data center, sorry, your source uh, ESXA host and your destination ESXA host and to be more specific, you can point your data stores and you can move a file between source and the destination. Okay, and VMware doesn't have a product called long distance vMotion in 2007 and the only way you, 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 ha you can move your the files is over a network only. You do not have any kind of 100% uh, availability setup like vMotion. 
so you can you didn't have such functionality so in that case you have to perform an offline file migration you have to shut down the vm and you have to locate your source and destination and and then you move your file over a network so fast stp is the tool uh, which was uh, available in the market from 2007 it made a huge huge impact in virtualization community because it used its own unique encryption methodology and it proved that uh, it can move a file from one location to another location with very minimal time okay compared to other tools available in the market one of the example is winscp example you try to move a file from singapore to taiwan using winscp and also you tried with a tool called fastscp okay and fastscp gave a significant difference in terms of uh, you know file movement example you saved at least 20% of the total time let's take an example 1 hour is the is the duration which took by winscp in um, using uh, uh, fastscp it it took like close to 45 minutes 45 minutes to 50 minutes so fastscp is the first tool which came into market and and we you know expanded their technical capabilities and they have released a product called vim backup and replication and and this was more like supporting vmware in 2008 and later they have uh, started supporting for hyper v and in 2015 uh, they supported individual physical machines earlier it was designed for more like a virtualization environment which was supported for vmware hyper v and 2015 onwards uh, they have uh, you know enabled to support microsoft oss and 2016 office 365 2017 an agent based backup for windows and linux yeah still the question remains same why we need to move on? why we need to explore why we need to purchase veeam as you can see uh, the product itself got uh, came into existence in 2008 and now it's 2018 so t- within 10 years you can see the product has been so dynamic here sorry this is dynamic here yeah yeah please go ahead yeah so what is the market ratio uh, uh, utilization of uh, veeam backup solution uh definitely uh, people are getting the awareness i i i cannot say and uh, you know the exact figure but this is definitely an 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 market leader or an uh, future backup solution okay but why i am asking this question because there are many product as you said in uh, market but uh, mm-hmm. solution uh, and the product reliability is the most important for a customer yes so this is the my question and this is this something i understanding the what is the ratio and how many customer using how is the reliable the product how is the achievement the customer feedback okay okay yeah i completely agree i i appreciate that you have raised this question yes so they, i i cannot give you the exact uh, percentage but this tool has has made a significant impact in the backup technology and and Uh, you, you take all fortune 500 companies and most of these companies are uh, uses veeam backup and replication i would say that um, this is going to be you know an 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 uh, a trend setter for the future backups where you can have your physical workloads and your virtual workloads and your cloud workloads related backups in one single tool so what about the cloud technology how much is reliable in the cloud technology cloud it's it's again instant so if you want to take see for a veeam it's it's all to everything is a machine okay okay so whether it can be a physical a virtual or a cloud so i have a slide i'll i'll, I'll brief you more on that you know how exactly the cloud is coming to picture about in terms of backup so we'll come to that thank you thank you masco continue please continue yeah 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 you can see here uh, veeam itself the product is started in 2008 and now you can see it's it's 2018 and in 2000 as of july 2017 last year so veeam it's 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 standing in fifth position you can see here dell commonwealth ibm veritas and veeam veeam is stands you know the leaders position because of its simplicity 
and and um, agentless backup solution and the, the licensing and um, integrity and 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 in any forms so like availability scalability security compute storage networking you take any any kind of these uh, you know categories yes veeam stands tall in terms of uh, you know the sim uh, the tool simplicity and the licensing let's take an example i have a veritas net backup tool that cost me around uh, 5000 us dollars for a single license okay but veeam it will it will cost you it will cost you around 900 us dollars Okay, and when you ask me, uh, will uh, Veeam support all the backup features available in the market? The answer is no. Uh, Veeam is it's 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 more like an uh, it's it 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 was started like a desktop level backup product, and later came in I mean later to an um, uh, virtual infrastructure backup tool, and now they're more I mean it's 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 trending towards um, the enterprise level backup. So it takes more, it takes some more time for Veeam to have the complete capabilities or to take on complete control like other uh, backup technologies available in the market. But yes, uh, they have made a significant move in terms of uh, the physical and virtual upload, virtual uh, workloads. Yeah, to be. As a conclusion, why Veeam? Why Veeam? Because Veeam is less in cost. The other one is easy to manage, and uh, they have uh, the maximum features available. Not all, but they can provide all maximum available features in the market. And moreover, when you purchase a Veeam, you will get a free um, you will get a free uh, monitoring and reporting software called Veeam One is free. So. In the market, uh, I don't think so. How many software is providing you free uh, monitoring and reporting software free when you purchase a backup product? But Veeam provides, and and uh, Veeam One, this is the name of the product. It's for free when you purchase in uh, Veeam Enterprise level licensing. Yeah. So since the product has emerged to more like an enterprise level product, yeah, the next question is how can I learn about the product? How can I implement it? Yes, you can implement it in terms of I provide in terms of uh, the product versions, and also you can also have an 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 university. So Veeam have their own education university, Veeam University, and they offer three certifications as of now. Uh, first one is professional, second one advanced, and third one is architect. And if you observe very closely. Uh, any VMware administrator, you can you can closely uh, relate VMware with Veeam in terms uh, the licensing, in terms the certification, in terms the product. So it was it was more like designed for VMware and its products. Okay, you can see a lot of similarities between VMware and Veeam. Yeah, it's all about the license now. So Veeam you can download for free. Um, you have a um, uh, basic features um, for free where you no need to have any licensing only you can just take a backup and then, then keep it in uh, local site or remote site um, with other key functionalities lock with the, with the locked key functionalities and they also have standard enterprise and enterprise plus licensing and how in that you can have an option whether you want to go for the number of sockets or you want to go for a uh, uh, total number of protected VMs. So if you want to plan for your uh, enterprise level environment, you have to decide like how many machines you want to protect and uh, how many hosts I'm, I'm, I'm going to enable this protection. So you have two ways to think and one is at the uh, total number of CPU, so CPU sockets, the other one is the total number of uh, machines you want to get it protected. Master, this is Darren again. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, is yeah. there a solution uh, for traditional backup or is that uh, block level changes tracking? <laughs> okay, so uh, it has got block level changes as well. It and it, it, it works like um, um, it, it's how the purpose of all the data movers. Um, you can you can take a block level backup. I mean, it, it will enable you to perform a block level changes related backup, a file level changes, and you can take complete image 
and and also you can have your entire uh, image being replicated so you have all levels of backups if i if i set the all the full backups if i uh -huh. set the all the application level backup even i if i set the uh, hmm? backup of uh, 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 like a snapshot backup full backup okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. So in my environment, uh, it's like a OMR we are using for the cloud technology. So we have some uh, all the backup uh, in a pool. Okay, mm -hmm. so it will take a only changes ratio. Mm -hmm. so is that kind of technology uh, built in uh, Veeam as well? Yes, uh, Veeam is by default built in with uh, data deduplication. Okay, so whatever the backups you change, uh, you know, it's a recommended as you know, it's a monthly full backup. Uh, uh, weekly uh, differential backup and daily incremental backup. So it's how the purpose. So what you, whatever you wanna have. Example, you wanna take a full backup and you 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 wanna put it either in the local site, remote site, or a cloud. All functionalities are supported. But here you do not have an individual naming convention. So it gives a global schedule, and you cannot have a. Uh, Policies like this example you want to set a incremental policy daily incremental or you want to give a specific name you cannot have that naming convention but you can set a policy in a such a way that what needs to be backed up and which folder or which virtual machine needs to be backed up and you can have all these options deduplication is a uh, right is it uh, is it a uh, integrate uh, it can be integrated with the data domain yes yes I'll show you I'll show you that you can, add a, you, you can add as an as, a, as you know data domain is designed for it's it's more like a storage and in and designed uh, to store your backups right so we can add this data domain and tape libraries and storage devices as a backup repository I'll show you when I have the demo actually okay faster. thank you yeah so now how it works you see here Veeam backup server. So you see here, Veeam backup server. Veeam backup server is nothing but a Windows-based Dart .exe application. Okay, you just download this application over the internet on your uh, Windows machine, a recommended and server-based machine. And once you install these packages, your machine is set, good to go. And uh, you can add a two type of uh, virtualization. Um, available in the market one is at the ESX level we have we call it as ESX host the other one is the Hyper-V so you can add these hosts as an um, as an backup as an back uh, once you install the backup server you can add this host to, to take a backup and you can set a policy you can set a backup policy where in the backup policy you can define which network you want to take example if you have multiple networks you can you can you can point it yes you want to take through this specific network path and you can have these backups scheduled at the same time example I have um, ESX host and also Hyper-V, I want to execute two backups at a time from a single backup server. It's possible. Answer is yes. The only thing it varies is it's all about the policy which you have set. So and, and the policies includes the backup medium which you use and the backup storage which you use. Example, uh, you want to put it into a disk or you want to put it into a, a Windows machine D drive or E drive. Okay, so all this comes under a backup repository. Backup repository can be a tape library, backup repository can be a data domain boxes, backup repository can be a cloud-based storage. Okay, it all depends on what kind of backup policy you set. Backup proxy, it's all about the network medium, which network medium you want to use it. It will have the information about where is my source and where is being uh, moved, backup is being moved and which network I should use. And keep in mind, backup server is an agentless solution because I mean uh, Veeam is an Veeam uses an agentless backup solution because directly it will connect your Hyper-V manager or it will directly con contact your ESX host or a vCenter server. You don't need to have any agent installed because already you have your hypervisor um, sitting on top to manage all your virtual machines. This is an example. Uh, you see here uh, Veeam with vCenter. So I have my Veeam backup and replication server and 
it will enable a broker. Let's take in uh, in another service. Veeam have we can we can install Veeam as a plugin or uh, Veeam as a service on top of a vCenter server. As long as you have access to vCenter server, you're all good to go to backup all the ESX host and its virtual machines. So backup server, it's acting like a bridge. I have all these machines needs to be backed up through vCenter server and can be backed up on the destination that is backup repository or in data store. Yeah. As you know, the industry standard, it's highly recommended to have multiple backup points and multiple backup locations. And here is an example. One is the off-site. Where you can see there are two sites. One is called the production site. The other one is DR site. Let's take an example. Production site is your Taiwan and the DR site is Singapore. And as you could see, it is connected over a van. So this is my local site. I have my source host and backup proxy will have information about all the uh, network information. So which path I should use, which medium I should use, available paths between source and the destination. And backup proxy will have the information about my DR site. And both the backup, backup proxy will have the information about source and the destination. And you have a protected site and you can have your recovery site. This is the cloud. And this one is all about uh, taking a backup on the cloud. Okay. It's pretty simple. You need three things. One is SSL certificate. Second one, the cloud gateway. And the third one is you need to have a cloud instance. Let me put it in this way. I have a Azure subscription. I will create a new Windows 2016 instance on top of Azure. I will install a backup, Veeam backup and replication application. And there is a product called Cloud Connect. On top of Azure, I will install Cloud Connect product. Through Cloud Connect, I will receive two things. One is the SSL certificate and second one is Cloud Gateway. Okay, Cloud Gateway is all about the IP address. I mean the public Cloud Gateway will have the information about this instances, FQDN fully qualified domain name and the IP address. And once I have my IP and my SSL certificate which is created on Cloud Connect, I'm all set to go and configure on my backup server. Okay, on my backup server, I'll configure my cloud instance as a cloud repository means whenever I take a backup the backup should go and reside on one of the virtual machine which is residing under Azure where that is not a virtual that is not a machine that is acting like a storage for me the cloud instance is just acting like a, a storage As you can see, I have my on-premises VMware or Hyper-V related virtual machine backup. And then that this is my production storage. Let's take an example. It's residing on a data store. And I'll, I'll take a backup. And then this backup, I mean, this is my um, uh, primary backup, which is residing on the source. This backup, I can either I can get replicated into my uh, cloud or I can directly attach it as in my uh, secondary storage are a backup storage. Yeah. Veeam Enterprise Manager. So Veeam Enterprise Manager, it's like vCenter Server. In VMware, we have something called vCenter Server. vCenter Server will manage multiple hypervisors in one single console. Example, 1000 ESX hosts can be managed under one single console and uh, uh, you can have 20,000 powered on machines which can be managed under one single console. So Veeam Enterprise Manager serve the same purpose. You can have a multiple individual Veeam backup servers. Example, Veeam backup server one is in 
Singapore, which is installed on Windows 2016. And you have one more Veeam backup server, one in uh, Netherlands, the other one is in um, Malaysia. So you have three different Veeam backup servers and these backup server has got their own repositories, their own um, uh, they, they, they own local uh, repository, offsite repository, or a cloud repository. All this individual backups, or all three uh, Veeam backup servers can be centrally managed by a single server called Veeam Enterprise Manager. Okay, sorry, Veeam Enterprise Manager, and this has got its own database, and that can be managed via a web interface. In vCenter, we call it as a web client. In Enterprise Manager, you just call some, just a web page, web user interface. Okay. Now it's time for a Veeam account overview and then demo. So anyone can create your own Veeam account. Just go to get into Veeam. So once you have logged into the portal and you can see the services or the solutions. So Veeam Cloud Solution, Infrastructure, Availability and so on. There are a number of services uh, and you know, solutions provided by Veeam and you can explore individually and let's go to product yeah this is the product and Veeam has got tied up with all the storage and backup providers available in the market you can see here Quantum, Nutanix, IBM, NetApp, Dell EMC and Veeam one with the one you know it comes with free like monitoring and reporting software and Veeam Availability Suit is the name of the product or the core product. So inside Veeam Availability Suit, you will have products like Veeam Backup and Replication and Veeam One. Both are combined, it will become a product, a single product called Veeam Availability Suit. So these are the products from Veeam. And I have an account, it's a free account, anyone can have you know, have and Veeam accounts created. And once you have a free account, there are 60 days free trial licenses you can download. Okay, try licenses. So you can see here, uh, these are the free trial licenses which you can make use of. You have products ranging from orchestrator, suit, replication for Hyper-V, VMware 365, 
and you see all this in, and you can see it by default it provides for 32 sockets and if you want to use it for Office 365 it's 50,000 users for free and, and so on so I have explored uh, Beam Cloud Connect, Beam Availability Suit and Beam One out of these products okay now look into the actual lab so there we go let me brief about my lab setup here so I may extend this session like 10-15 uh, minutes and uh, um, Thanks for you know uh, extending this session. So this is gonna be my uh, physical server. This is my physical server. I have Dell PowerEdge R710. Uh, it's a Dell 11th generation 2U rack mountable server where on top of it I have installed ESXi six point five. So on top of it I have built seventeen plus VMs and one of the machine is acting as my uh, Veeam backup and replication server. One server act as my enterprise manager and one server acting as my Hyper-V machine and other machines act like ESXi hosts and domain controllers and so on. So I have built my entire virtual infrastructure on top of one single machine and this host has got this physical server have a local storage of 1.2 TB let me bring up my machine You can see um, I have multiple machines. Uh, one is domain controllers, can one the vCenter, third one Hyper-V. And here in this example, my domain controller is acting as my vCenter server, sorry, Veeam backup server and enterprise manager. So both can be installed in a single machine. Let me log in. As you can see, I have added an uh, ESXi host. Uh, this is going to be my ESXi host. You can see here. Um, I have added my physical server itself as my backup server. So whatever you see now, the bare metal uh, Dell PowerEdge R710 where I have built uh, 17 machines. I have added the same machine to my virtual infrastructure server uh, under my uh, VM vSphere so here I can see all the machines and 
and I can take a backup of AM these machines. And I was speaking about uh, backup infrastructure or backup repository. See here, I can add the data, so the local data store running on the storage server itself as a uh, backup repository, or I can configure an Azure based backup machine. Let's take controller.cloud.com is an Azure machine. Uh, this can act like my uh, cloud storage repository and also my local uh, repositories. Any, any Windows machine can act like a local repositories. and and veeam uh, a backup enterprise manager it's 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 like in vcenter as i told you it's like a vcenter server which manages all your veeam uh, backup servers Well, you can see here I can add all my uh, windows based machines windows based backup servers B centers I was pointing to this as you can see here a Veeam backup enterprise manager can manage multiple windows based Veeam backup and server and it can also manage a direct vCenter server as well. If you want to manage directly a vCenter server under an uh, Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager, yes, you can. So this is more like a dashboard which will have information about how many jobs are running and how many VMs are being backed up and what happened to the backup job. All this can be centrally managed. Instead of logging into multiple Veeam backup server, you can centrally log into a Veeam Enterprise Manager machine and again in, in my example, my domain controller machine acting as both uh, Veeam backup server as well as backup enterprise manager. As you can see, I am added my local host. Let me take a backup and then show you. So how to create a backup? So let me create a backup, um, vSphere VM related backup. where it will ask you which machine. Since I have directly connected to the hypervisor, you will have access to the virtual machine. So you can click on add and 0.240 is my ESXi host and I want to take a backup of this specific virtual machine. I can select the machine 
and then it's gonna ask, ask you about the backup proxy and which network you want to select by default it's automatic selection because i do not have uh, multiple uh, network configurations so it's set it to automatic selection and backup repository it's all about where you want to take a backup storage medium okay example here in this example uh, my domain controller machine itself acting as my backup repository let me show you i have you can see i have three disks one is c drive uh, d my cd dvd a third one is my um, e drive where 78.4 gb is free as I told you earlier, you can have a backup repository which can be a local machine, a local storage, uh, data domain boxes, a tape library, anything as such. And retention policy, it's all about how long you want to keep. And what kind of backup here? There is something called, as I told, uh, there's something called twice where it will halt and take a backup when you have a, a continuous transaction happening to a specific database file. At that time, you can have an application over processing enabled and an indexing enabled. Currently, it's just an ESX site doesn't have much things to do on my virtual machine. And moreover, my machine is down, so I no need to enable this. When a machine is on and you have a continuous transaction logs and read write high is high on your virtual machine or a physical machine, then you can have both options enabled. And third one is all about the policy, the scheduling policy. As may, as people who have joined, you are aware that um, in backup tools like a Symantec Net Backup, we have a, a backup policy where you can define the type of backup what kind of backup you want to keep whether you want to take a full backup incremental backup a differential backup so you have all these options here i told earlier as i have told earlier you do not have an option to select uh, the type of backup but you can select you know the duration like uh, what you want to take a backup whether you want to take a daily backup monthly uh, periodically okay you can have all these options and you can also define a backup window. Uh, this is very important because you won't schedule your backup in your production in production harsh example uh, in India morning uh, 9 a.m. to uh, 6 p.m. So business harsh, right? So you can have an option to exclude uh, this business uh, timings and then include a specific time to take a backup. That is all about a backup window. So you set a backup and run this job when I finish it. Yeah, as you can see, uh, this here, it's started taking a backup of my uh, virtual machine which is running on ESXi 6.5 where this machine is running as a virtual machine and the backup uh, application server installed on one of the guests which is running on the same host and the backup server is my ESX itself and the destination is uh, uh, one of the virtual machine local e drive okay this tool is pretty simple it's like in dot exe uh, you just get down just got to download from beam backup uh, slash downloads and and you will have a 60 days trial licensing and you have to download the license key and at the time of installation you need to provide the license key and and once you installed and you all set to go this is all about your beam backup and replication application it's pretty simple and you you select your source and destination and I was discussing about tape mediums. You can see here, you can have a backup. You can you can you can add your tape server. You can you can take a file to tape backup, backup to tape, and restore your file from a tape. And also, you can attach all the major storage vendors available in the market. Example: Nutanix, EMC, and uh, Dell, and NetApp. So any kind of you know, uh, storage whoever I mean the, all the storage vendors um, 
uh, were available in the market in here and you can also have you can also provide an and an snapshot a snapshot of your storage when you have an access direct to the storage and it was um, backup infrastructure it's all about uh, what do you want to keep whether you want to keep uh, backup on the local machine i mean storage on the local and uh, offsite or you want to set up something on the cloud like an azure where you will have a cloud gateway ssl and uh, the cloud instance itself the only thing you need to have is a cloud connect a beam cloud connect application that needs to be installed on the cloud instance and then you all set to go yeah this is a demo uh, about the product and beam backup and replication how simple it is and and then the capabilities and what all it can do it yeah that's all guys for the day and and please let me know if you have any questions so sure. And I do have all your email IDs. So I'll, I'll send you uh, with this recording along with the uh, PPTs, and 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 request your and request you to have your feedback filled, and and please provide. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll make make a note of that end sheet, and please respond back to me with the feedbacks. And and I'm and you know and and you know where I'm available. You can ping me anytime if you want to set up on your own. Example, you are, you have your own infrastructure, and you want to set up and you need and help. I'm here to help. I can give you all the things which are is needed for you to you know uh, get started. Like in free version, yes, I have the repository. I'll, I'll do one thing. I'll upload all my softwares into my cloud, OneDrive. Sorry, OneDrive, and I'll give you the link as well, so anyone can go ahead and download it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep uh, like two to three minutes for a, a question. So if if there is anyone is if they, if anyone have any question, you can you know you're free to ask to me now. Uh, yeah, Baskar, I have one question. Yes, please. Your name? Yeah, I'm Kumar. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can I take a database level backup in this one? You can. You can take a backup. Yes. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. You can take any kind of any any machine. You can take a physical machine. You can take a virtual machine. You can take a cloud instance. For a backup software, it's just a machine. It just need an IP, username, and password. And you can take a backup like individual uh, drive level backup, complete image that complete VM level backup, and file and folder level backup. You can have all these flexibilities. No, uh, I'm asking about the uh, SQL database level backup. Suppose you can, you can I, take. Okay. Any particular yeah, DB can. also you can take, right? Correct, correct. You want to take a specific instance, I mean DB instance, yes, you can. I have pointed to a virtual machine. It took the image level backup. When I add an individual Windows machine, then it will have an access to backup for C drive, D drive, E drive, and a specific folder. Anything, anything you can, you can take a backup. Yeah. Any other questions? So as you can see, you can have a virtual infrastructure and you can have a physical machine and you can have a cloud infrastructure. So everything in one single console. Okay. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for joining. And you. uh, in future you will see more sessions coming up on AWS. Azure cloud comparisons, uh, VMware troubleshooting, 
and what's new with the VSPS 6.7 and kindly look out for you know emails and and we have uh, a paid session as well as we have uh, uh, unpaid session I mean free session like this uh, keep following up on uh, Atos University I'll, I'll, I'll send you an a blue kiwi invite so where you can see the upcoming programs and you can opt for it and also we will send out communications uh, through your managers to you and can anytime you know uh, get nominated from your end yeah thank, thank you so you. much thanks guys have a great thank day you. happy weekend to you all bye thank you. Thanks. Thanks.